Hello students, welcome to the English class. Today we are going to do another poem from your invitation to English, the poetry section, the second poem that is the ballad of Father Gilligan. This is written by W. B. Yeats. His full name was William Butler Yeats. Coming to the poet, William Butler Yeats was born in 1865 and died in 1939. W. B. Yeats was an Irish poet and one of the foremost figures of 20th century literature. He was born in Ireland and educated in London. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1923. Now coming to the title of the poem. The title says, a, a Ballad of Father Gilligan. Now, what is a ballad? In short, if we say, ballad is a story in verse. Now, what is a story in verse? Now, see, usually we read story in prose form. Whenever we read a story from a storybook, do you find it, it, it is written in a form of poetry? No. We see it is written in a form of prose. But here, we have a story that is written by the poet in the form of a verse, that is poem. Now, what are the other features, other prominent features of a ballad? The other prominent features of a ballad is number one, it has a, it is a narrative, that is it tells a story. Number two, it pertains to the oral folk tradition, that is it has its origin in folk literature. Number three, it is musical. When we read the poem, we will find out some lines, they rhyme and it appears musical to the ears. Next, that is it is has a dramatic quality or dramatic element. Now, what is the dramatic element? It is full of dialogues. Like you know drama, how do you know it is a drama? When there are characters who talk to each other, interact with each other in the form of dialogues and there is action also. While teaching the poem, I will be pointing out of some of the features. Now, we will recite the poem just to see wh what exactly the poem means. The Ballad of Father Gilligan by W. B. Yeats. The old priest Peter Gilligan was very night and day for half his flock were in their beds or under green swords lay. Once, while he nodded on a chair at the moth hour of eve, another poor man sent for him and he began to grieve. I have no rest, nor joy, nor peace, for people die and die. And after, cried he, God forgive, my body spake, not I. He knelt and leaning on the chair, he prayed and fell asleep and the moth hour went from the fields and stars began to peep. Then they slowly into millions grew and leaves shook in the wind and God covered the world with shade and whispered to mankind. Upon the time of sparrow chirp, when the moths come once more, the old priest Peter Gilligan stood upright on the floor. Mavron, Mavron, the man has died. While I slept on the chair, he roused his horse out of its sleep and rode with little care. He rode now as he never rode by rocky lane and fen. The sick man's wife opened the door. Father, you come again. And is the poor man dead? He cried. He died an hour ago. The old priest Peter Gilligan in grief swayed to and fro. When you were gone, he turned and died as merry as a bird. The old priest Peter Gilligan, he knelt him of that word. He who hath made the night of stars for souls who tire and bleed sent one of his great angels down to help me in my need. He who is wrapped in purple robes with planets in his care 
had pity on the least of things a slip upon a chair now students let us go to the stanza wise analysis of the poem the ballad of father gilligan by w b yeats the first four lines the first stanza the first four lines are called the quatrain the each uh, i mean each stanza consists of four lines which are a quatrain and there is a wonderful thing that you can notice as i was reading it out i was uh, as i was reciting it you find that the second and the fourth line are rhyming that is how i told you that it has a musical element the ballad has a musical element because it rhymes like you know the here day and lay when you say that it is rhyming so that is how it has got a musical element now the first four lines the old priest peter gilligan was very night and day for half his folk were in their beds or under green sods lay now coming to the peter who is peter gilligan peter gilligan is the priest now what kind of a priest is he is he young or old there's a the, the poet describes him as a old priest because he is old and then was very night and day very night and day what's the meaning of very very is tired now when you work day and night what happens you feel tired so here also what you find that peter gilligan was serving the people in his parish parish is the locality around the church there is a church there is a father or a priest who who uh, helps the people with his i mean service with his services and there you find this is called a parish so the people of the parish were most probably affected by an epidemic for which they were dying in large numbers that many people were dying because many people were dying now the duty of the father or the priest becomes that he has to go to the dying person and say his prayers and if a person is already dead so he has to conduct the funeral rites or the rituals that are associated after death so these two jobs he was doing and when so many people were dying so obviously what do you find that the priest was thoroughly exhausted thoroughly tired so old priest peter gilligan was very night and day so night and day means day in day out or night as well as day or day and night he was very much tired why was he tired because he was serving the people for half his flock were in their beds now flock imagine when do you use this word flock when you say a flock of sheep that time what comes to your mind is a shepherd who manages the flock who takes care of the flock guides them like that you find the father gilligan or the father the priest was guiding the people of his parish the people of his parish were called the parishioners for half his flock were in their beds now in their beds now bed is not here a comforting place where you can take rest normally when we get tired what we do we sleep on a beds and you take rest but here bed means the sick people who are now confined to their beds so i have shown you in a picture that is a green sod now or under green sod there are two things either these people are very sick they are in their beds ha huh? other other thing is or under green sods lie green sod what have, that is they lie in their graves they are buried under the ground now when they are buried under the ground see the picture you have the tombstones and you know the grass has grown that is why it is called green sods now green sod also means graves covered by green grass so that is how you find two things had happened 
for which Father Gilligan was extremely tired, extremely busy and for that he was tired, he was doing his service for the people of that parish or the locality where the, around the church, parish as I told you is the locality around the church. So, he was doing performing his duty and you find he was feeling extremely tired or under green sorts lay. Come moving on to the second stanza. Once while he nodded on a chair at the moth hour of eve, another poor man sent for him and he began to grieve. The poet has already mentioned about the condition of the priest that is father Gilligan was very tired. So, because he was tired, he was sitting on his chair, look at the uh, I mean the, um, uh, the picture that I have shown you, sitting on his chair and what was he doing? He was not merely sitting on the chair, he was nodding on his chair, he was feeling asleep. Have you ever noticed a person nodding, dozing? Okay? So, he was dozing on his chair and that is how he was asleep on the chair at the moth hour of eve. What is, see the picture of a moth. So, normally the moths appear when it is evening time, it is dark, the moths appear. So, at the moth hour of eve, eve is a, uh, is the another word for evening. Another poor man sent for him and he began to grieve. So, what you find? Another poor man sent for him. There was another call for him. What was that call for? As you know, he was doing his service, he was giving services, service to the people. So, there was a man who, poor man who had called for him. He was a sick man and he wanted help from Father Gilligan. So, who began to grieve? Because the poor man called him, you find Father Gilligan started grieving. Why was he giving? Why was he feeling upset? Why was he very sorrowful? He was sorrowful because what you find that you know he is saying I am so tired, I am unable to go, I am unable to do anything now, I am really very tired. So, he started grieving. So, he wanted to express his sorrow. Why did he want to express his sorrow? He wanted to express his sorrow because there is no, he is finding that it is very difficult for him to manage the thing. And as I told you beforehand that he was a priest and he was the only priest over there and around him the locality where you find the parishioners were there, he had to serve the people and probably there was an epidemic for which many people were dying or people were dying in large numbers. So, that is how what you find he had to take care of them either by saying prayers for the person who was sick and was about to die or he was actually giving services to the dead person by just like the funeral services are given. So, now we find that he was because of that thing he began to grieve, he was feeling very sad, he was feeling very upset because he is thinking that you know I am so tired, I am his old man, he is tired, he is unable to do his work and that is how he started feeling very upset and it was what time of the it is it is the evening time and you as you find he is there on his chair and on a chair and he was not see he is not sitting upright normally when we uh, study what we do we study we are st sitting upright and do something with the table and a chair and all that but what was father Gilligan doing he was nodding on a chair he was asleep on a chair because his body was not permitting he was feeling very tired so what was he doing he was nodding on the chair and at the and the, what was the time? It was evening time. He was already overworked. He was already overworked. He was working very hard. So, he was he was feeling he wanted to take rest for which you find he felt asleep on a chair and during that time what you find a poor man has sent for him. Sent for him means called for his help, wanted to take his help. And this is the time when you find Father Gilligan is feeling very unhappy, he is grieving, he is actually, he is in grief, he is upset, he is sorrowful, he is thinking that you know I should get some time for this. And uh, this is the situation in the two stanzas and the moth hour of eve I explained you, why is it called moth hour? It is evening time when the moths appear and that is how it is called the 
Motar. In the last stanza, you saw how Father Gilligan was asleep on a chair and he was very unhappy when he was called by the poor man who needed his service. Now in the third stanza, you have a continuation of that idea. What you have? I have no rest, nor joy, nor peace, for people die and die. And after cried he, God forgive my body spake, not I. I have no rest, nor joy, nor peace. This is the complaint he is making. Before whom? See, look at the picture, he is making a complaint that you know, in my life, I have been working and working, I am overworked, I do not have time to take rest or be happy or be in peace. Why? Because these people are dying in large numbers. How do you know that? There is an emphasis on the word die and die. For people die and die, there is no limit. People are dying. So, that is how people die and die. And after cried he, suddenly he realizes his mistake. What, what does he realize? That this God given duty of a priest has to be conducted by him all the time and he should not be complaining. So, what he said? After cried he, God forgive. He is saying, God, please forgive me. Why? because it is my body spake, not I. Now, what is the difference between these two? My body spake, my body spake means my physical body has spoken these words. Which words? The words that I am tired, I am upset, I do not have joy, I do not have rest, I do not have peace. Who said this? Actually, this was said by whom? By by the physical body because the physical body gets tired and not the soul, not I because the soul is eternally connected to, who, to whom? To God and soul never gets tired, soul never feels uh, disturbed, soul never complains about anything, it is only the physical body. If you labor hard for see, uh, for I mean uh, if you have your exams and you are trying very hard to uh, write for the exams and all that, what will you do? You will study day in and day out and then what you, what you feel? You feel tired, the physical body you feel like sleeping, you feel like taking rest, but here the difference that Peter Gilligan wants to show and explain to God, God, justify to God what? God please forgive me because I did not mean to say these, these reckless words, careless words. The words that I spoke are very careless because I should not be going against you. Why? You is your God. Why? Because God has given me this duty. When God has assigned me some duty, I should be happily doing it. I should not feel I am tired because it is God given duty. So, he is differentiating or dis distinguishing between two things that is physical body and the other one is the soul. So, soul is eternally connected, eternally happy because it is connected to God. So, soul never gets tired. What gets tired? The physical body. So, you find that he says, I have no rest, no joy, nor peace for people die and die. That was spoken in a careless manner. He talks to, he, he asks for forgiveness to God. Please God forgive me because these words were very careless on my part to be spoken and this was spoken by my physical body. He knelt and leaning on the chair, he prayed and fall, fell asleep. So, what you find as he was speaking these words, these words of repentance, repenting, he was repenting, he was very uh, sorry for whatever he said. As he was sorry for whatever he said, he knelt and leaning on the chair, he knelt, he knelt for what? He knelt to pray to God and leaning on the chair, he prayed and fell asleep. What happened? He suddenly fell asleep again because he was physically tired. And the moth hour went from the fields and stars began to peep. 
so you have what is happening now the, it was evening time you remember how the evening time the moths had appeared and the moth hour went from the fields so gradually the moth hour is going away that is evening is leading way to the night time how do you know it is night time because the stars have begun peeping and the stars are now come just like you know we peeped in the night sky in the night sky the stars are peeping and because of the twinkling aspect of the stars and it's night uh, fully black you find as if someone is peeping just like you know people peep suppose you are uh, suppose your teacher is taking a class or who is the teacher taking a class you come and peep inside that is have a look quickly secretly so that is how it looks to the poet as if stars are peeping from the sky moving on to the third stanza they slowly into millions grew and leaves shook in the wind and god covered the world with shade and whispered to mankind now they slowly so one star appears then you find two three four stars and then you find millions of stars in the sky in the night sky and that and and you know the whole night sky is covered with stars and then the leaves started shaking in the wind there was a wind blowing and the leaves were shaking in the uh, in the wind god covered the world with shade now why this night time is given so that the so that god's creation you find men they can go to sleep so that is how there was a shade and whisper to mankind so god covered the world with shade so that it is comforting for the mankind to sleep when you are it is very hot sun or something what you find you draw the curtains when you draw the curtains you can sleep sleep peacefully like that what you find god covered the world with shade the whole world you find his creation they can sleep peacefully and whisper to mankind see nobody is saying in a loud voice if you say in a loud voice what happens you know you will be awoken if you are going to sleep someone calls you in your by your name what will happen you will be awoken but here god speaks very gently speak very softly whisper is speak softly and quietly to somebody so god is speaking very softly just like someone comes and says good night dear have sweet dreams as if god is coming and telling you that just like a mother takes care of her children and you be and after everybody has slept she comes and sweetly whispers in your ears like that god is coming and whispering to mankind and uh, now we can go for a re uh, recap and uh, find out what are the things that we did so the first stanza you find the uh, father gilligan who is a priest and he is a priest of a church and he is taking care of his parishioners how he is taking care now you find epidemic uh, most probably an epidemic has broken out and that is how many people are dying people are dying every day and that is how you find here that uh, his uh, he has to say his prayers to the dying man or he has to go and uh, do the funeral rites so that is how you find that you know he is actually uh, taking care of his parishioners and then you find that you know he was very tired when another man poor man called for him he is complaining he is saying god i don't have peace i don't have uh, leisure time i don't have uh, joy i am unhappy and all that when he complained suddenly he realized he shouldn't have done so this is very careless on his part because god this is god's duty assigned to him then he makes a difference between the body and the soul he says my physical body was tired not i am not tired in my soul and then you find he is remembering as he is repenting suddenly he fell asleep again and as he falls as, as he sleeps on his chair then what you find that you know the star covered sky and god has created this uh, uh, night sky for comforting for a comforting sleep for the mankind even if father gilligan was tired now we find god is there to take care of mankind and he takes care of every creature and here when you find it, he make, he creates a night uh, time with because it's a shade it's a shade and he whispers to in the ears of mankind what you go to sleep peacefully now we had seen how it was evening time and father had fallen asleep on his chair and it was the time when the moths had appeared now 
we will see what happened next. The stanza here, upon the time of sparrow chirp, upon when the moths came once more, the old priest Peter Gilligan stood upright on the floor. Upon the time of sparrow chirp. Now chirp sound is chirping sound is made by the birds. So sparrow is a small bird, and now it is morning time. And uh, before the daybreak, you find the moths had come once more. Why we say once more? The line here once more suggests because they had appeared in the evening time. The moths had. The, you remember that uh, uh, that phrase, uh, Eve, where he uh, he talked about the moth hour of the eve. So here we are talking about the. Morning, morning before I mean the daybreak. So early hours of the morning when you find it is a bit dark and the moths have come once more. The old priest Peter Gilligan stood upright on the floor. Suddenly when you find it is the time when the sparrows are chirping, the birds are making some noise and what the sound that uh, the sparrows make chirping is at uh, early hours of the morning before daybreak and that sound is coming and suddenly when you find the moths have also appeared um, on the scene and it is the time when suddenly old priest Peter Gilligan wakes up with a start and stood upright on the floor that is he stands erect on the floor and looks and he realizes something has gone wrong. Mavron, Mavron, the man has died while I slept on the chair. He roused his horse out of its sleep and rode with little care. Mavron, Mavron, that's a cry of grief in Irish. Uh, we talked about uh, Yeats being an Irish poet. So he has used this Irish word here and he's saying, uh, mavron, mavron. So this word means so sorry that you know the man has died while I slept on the chair. So as I was relaxing, someone else was having pain and he was in pain and he died. So he's saying the man has died while I slept on the chair. He roused his horse out of its sleep and rode with little care. Roused his horse with out of its sleep. The horse was also relaxing. As Father Gilligan was relaxing, you find the horse knew that there was no other work to do, and that is how it was relaxing. So, what did Father Gilligan do? He made his horse uh, uh, wake up, and what did he do? He started galloping on the horse to reach out to the poor man's house because that was his duty. The old, the poor man had actually called for him to attend so that Father Gilligan could attend him or say his prayers while the sick man was dying. But what you find Father Gilligan had suddenly felt asleep on the chair and that is how here when it is morning time and he realizes his mistake what does he say? He says uh, he says I am very sorry and he says alas my sorrow Mavron Mavron the man has died. So the man might have been dead by now because it was evening time when he had called for him and now it is already morning. So uh, while I slept on the chair something else has happened that is the man might have died. He roused his horse out of its sleep. So the horse is now fully active and uh, Father Gilligan is gallop riding the horse with a galloping speed. How do you know that? Rode with little care. He does not take care of or uh, he does not care for his comfort. He is not looking for his comfort zone. He is now worried about what is how he is about he is going to reach the poor man's house and how can he attend him. He rode now as he never rode by rocky lane and fane. The sick man's wife opened the door, father you come again. So he rode now as he never rode. So what you find that he is riding very very fast. That is how he never rode like this because he is in a hurry to reach the poor man's house by rocky lane and fane. Rocky because the path that he is taking to the poor man's house is not a very smooth path. It is a rocky path and fen. Fen is wet and marshland. So what you find is a marshland, marshy land everywhere and you know he has to go. Uh, these are all the different kind of hurdles that have come on his way but he is not caring for the, these hurdles. What is he doing? He is moving very fast on the horse. We say galloping on the 
hearts. The sick man's wife opened the door, Father, you come again. If you remember, I was talking of the ballad. I said one of the features is that that you know you have to you have some dialogues. Now see the the sick man's wife is opening. He she answered the door, and she said, "Father, you come again." Now you come again. When you say you come again, obviously the readers are surprised because we know Father Gilligan just now arrived. But who was there that the wife says that uh, you come again? And is the poor man dead? But Father Gillingham was not in a mood to listen to anything because he was just worried about the old, the sick man's condition. So he's saying, "Is the poor man dead?" There is another dialogue here. Father, you come again, and you find Father Gillingham saying, "Is the poor man dead?" He cried. He died an hour ago, and now he comes to know the information that he died an hour ago. The old priest Peter Gillingham, in grief, swayed to and fro. So what you find that the old priest, uh, the he died an hour ago. The old priest Peter Gilligan in grief swayed to and fro. How is he feeling? His in utmost you know sorrowful condition. The priest was heartbroken for failing in his religious responsibility or duty to provide the last communion to the sick man because the sick man or the dying man needed some kind of uh, you know prayers. the communion and now the because he could not provide the old priest peter gilligan is sinking his feeling very bad and what is he doing in grief swayed to and fro now this is not in the daffodil poem if you remember to and fro we had said how you know out of joy the daffodils were Sway, swaying to and fro but here you find that you know the uh, in this poem here because peter gilligan is very unhappy he is not he has failed in his duty he is heartbroken and out of his unhappiness what you find he is swaying to and fro and he is praying to god that something has gone wrong uh, and you know because of this that was he, that was why he said mavron mavron allah he said when he woke up from his sleep and he uh, galloped in that hall very fast to come to reach to that uh, place of that sick man and the sick man's wife opens the door and says that you know i'm uh, it's uh, i'm i'm surprised to see you again i'm surprised because why did you come again and he had died an hour ago and the information that uh, gilligan uh, father gilligan receives is already the old the poor man is dead and in that too that was just an hour ago the old priest peter gilligan in grief so he because out of his uh, you know utter dismay and uh, feeling very bad about it and thinking that you know uh, what 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 a mistake he did so what he is doing he is uh, he in grief he is swaying to and fro he is feeling very unhappy see this was a mistake on my part i had i should have attended but i could not attend to the dying man and th this is what he there's lot of repentance in him and he is feeling very very extremely unhappy and heartbroken this is where you find the failing that he was failing in his religious responsibility or duty the god given duty was that he should serve the people or the parishioners of his parish but what you find he is unable to serve them he finds that he has failed utmost in his duty so here he says his he is in grief swayed to and fro so moving to and fro this motion shows that he is in grief as i told you in that poem daffodils where you find the flowers were rejoicing in happiness and they were they were moving to and fro but here what you find they here peter gilligan is so i mean father gilligan is so unhappy that he is moving to and fro in his grief as uh, father gilligan comes to know about the information that the poor man is dead he was very much shocked and was in grief and uh, uh, he was heartbroken also and then the next stanza where he says when you were gone he turned and died as merry as a bird the old priest peter gilligan he knelt him at that word so in the picture you can see how he is feeling uh, he is having repentance and he is kneeling before god and praying to him because he comes to know that he god himself had sent one of his angels to take care of this situation 
when you were gone he turned and died because the the wife of the uh, poor man comes and says that as merry as a bird how he died how her husband died he died as merry as a bird that he died in happiness without any remorse or repent or anything because the uh, because the last prayers the sick man received the last rites from father gilligan so supposed to be father gilligan it was not father gilligan but so god has sent one of his angels in the guise of father gilligan so when he were gone that he did not know then but he realized it he realized it because when he said when she said father you come again that suggested that this was the, the wife has seen father gilligan for the second time but in fact we all know that father gilligan had just arrived on the scene so when you were gone he turned and died as merry as a bird so this was the report given by the wife that very happily he died without any remorse without any repentance the old priest peter gilligan he knelt him at that word so the old priest realized that god has helped him because of god's help he wanted to thank god for that he is kneeling down and praying to him and thanking him and next he who hath made the night of stars for souls who tire and bleed sent one of his great angels down to help me in my need and uh, as an expression of his gratitude and his humility that is he is humble and he is grateful to god and he is saying he who hath made the night of stars so god who is the creator and he has created everything for us who had made the night of stars that is a very peaceful night in before that we had also discussed how the shady night has come and it is comforting for the human beings to sleep and god whispers in the ears of mankind saying good night sleep and that is how you find the night of stars here for souls who tire and bleed so here no one is bleeding really but when someone is very hard working then we say you know by the uh, by because of his blood and sweat we say so sweat because when you work hard you are sweating so here who tire and bleed means hard working people who do their duties or discharge their duties and responsibilities so that is how for souls who tire and bleed sent one of his great angels down so one of his great angels you see the picture of an angel and uh, angel is coming and uh, helping uh, father gilligan in the guise of father gilligan he has come because father gilligan was was asleep the chair and that is how you find the angel has come in the guise of father gilligan he has taken the uh, i mean you know look of father gilligan and say, uh, god has sent the great or uh, one of his great angels so angels uh, in the, uh, the so you find that angel has come down to help him in his need need means he was supposed to do discharge his duty to the the sick man and uh, god has god has lent or extended a helping hand to father gilligan by sending one of his angels to the earth to offer the last communion to the dying man by by uh, by doing this kind of by doing this act what you find that god has helped father gilligan so he is uh, although he was resting he could not come uh, physically but god could see that god could realize that and because he was a he was a soul who was very hard working so that is why he has sent god has sent one of his angels he who is wrapped in purple robes with planets in his care had pity on the list of things asleep upon a chair he who is wrapped here a very conventional image of uh, god is given the poet imagines what he who is wrapped in purple robes so god is wrapped in purple robes here we have a picture uh, where you find the robes are long flowing garment used for official or ceremonial occasions by your priest or church these uh, robes i mean flowing garments and it is purple in color so god who has created so many great thing, i mean big things and also the creation includes the 
planets also so it planets in his care so wherever we have this capital h he is we are referring to it refers to god so planets because of the planets do come and dash against uh, uh, each other why because god is taken care to see that they revolve in their own orbits and had pity on the least of things so who does so many great things i mean god does so many great things but god is benevolent enough to take care also of a very insignificant creature like father gilligan so father gilligan is filled with humility he is humbled and he is saying that you know i am not i am in comparison to the vast creation of uh, god i am nothing i am just a insignificant creature i am just a small creature in, in comparison to the vast creation of god so still till then uh, still then god had pity on me and god took pity on me i am the least of things i am very small i am very small in comparison i am very insignificant in comparison but god what he did i was just asleep on the chair god is omniscient god knows everything god takes care of everything and he has uh, uh, i mean he has taken the care to help me as i was I, i was asleep upon a chair that word if you remember he nodded uh, on in his chair i mean he was just i mean sleeping on his uh, asleep or fallen asleep temporarily for in his, because he was of his tiredness because he was physically and mentally tired so you find he was totally drained out he was very tired so he slept in a, uh, in his chair and god has taken care of it god could understand god could understand that uh, the intention of father gilligan was not to uh, shirk from his duty or not to do his duty rather what you find the intention was good enough but because he comes and he repents after that that i have not done the god given duty Uh, that was assigned to me so because of his repentance god took uh, god took care of it and had sent one of his angels and that is how he feels that god had taken pity on me and uh, he feels he feels that uh, the he actually glorifies god and so we are coming back to the summary here where we find uh, yet tells the story in verse because we talked about the ballad and it's an old priest who was very tired and uh, very unhappy very sad because most of his flock had died and flock refers to his parishioners he he was sent by uh, for by a dying man or a sick man but uh, while uh, while he was complaining to god that you know i am very tired he fell asleep in his chair before answering the call the stars had multiplied in the night time and uh, night had set in from evening it is uh, moving on to the night time and the meantime god sent one of his great angels in the guise of father gilligan to render service to the dying man the poor man dies peacefully and that is how we find once more in the morning when uh, father gilligan uh, awoke uh, with a start why because he is really taken aback because he was supposed to attend but he could not attend he is full of remorse full of repentance uh, and uh, he rushes back to on his horse galloping very sp- uh, fast very speedily to come and find out uh, to reach the poor man's house and uh, to, to he finds that the uh, lady uh, the wife of the poor man answers the door and lets him know that this was the second time he sees father gilligan in fact what to find actually this is the first time father gilligan physically comes over here the poor man died peacefully in the morning father gilligan woke up with a start realizing that he had not done his duty rushed to the sick man's house where he has answered the door and says that the man has died the woman thanks him for coming the previous night father gilligan realizes the divine grace falls to his knees and thanks god for sending an angel down to his do his work when he was too tired to do so uh, now students we can uh, move on to a few question answers and uh, and just see uh, this kind of questions come for your exams uh, the the objective type of questions uh, why was the father Gil- why was the father gilligan weary why was he tired father gilligan was thoroughly exhausted because by performing uh, his priestly duties or you can say the god given duties day uh, day and night 
all through. He was saying the last prayers to his poor folks who were dying in large numbers and conducted funeral services for the dying souls to rest in peace. That is why he was very tired. What is referred to as moth hour of eve? Moth hour is the time when moths come in swarms, that is in large numbers. This happens usually in the evening. Although in the poem there is a mention of the before the day breaks, the moths also arrive once more. But then uh, since this is referred to as the moth hour of eve, we are going to uh, specifically write about the evening time. Why did Father Gilligan ask forgiveness from God? How did he justify it? Now, Father Gilligan was the priest in charge of in charge in charge of the uh, of the people staying in the locality around the church. It was his God given duty to look after them and perform their religious services. Therefore, Father Gilligan's desperate words of rest was against God's desire. Understanding uh, or realizing his fault, Father Gilligan prayed for God's mercy or forgiveness for his reckless or careless words. He was not using the, uh, he, because that was not uh, supposed to be spoken by him. He justifies that, uh, justifies it by saying that his physical body is tired, but not his soul. Why does uh, the priest cry out Mavron, Mavron? Mavron uh, means a cry of sorrow, that is an Irish word. Father Gilligan feels guilty for not discharging his duties as a priest, unable to because what was the priestly duty? To attend the poor dying man. That is why he cries out in anguish or in, um, in a very sorrowful state. He says Mavron, Mavron, that is an Irish word which means a cry of sorrow, alas. Bring, uh, bring out the meaning of the expression he rode now as he never rode. It shows that he was in a hurry to reach the poor man's house without caring for his own comfort. You find the, uh, the, uh, the path was not smooth and still it was filled with rocky fanes and all that. He roused his horse out of its lip and rode with little care and comfort for himself. Who uh, came to the sick man before uh, his death and why? God sent one of his great angels in the guise of Father Gilligan to attend the sick man. So here what we find? God is compassionate and he took pity on Father Gilligan who was tired discharging his duty. So, let us uh, now make a kind of uh, recap of uh, uh, whatever we did in this poem. The first part of it uh, dealt with Father Gilligan who was a priest of, uh, of a parish. So, that means the uh, uh, around the church uh, you have a locality and that is called a parish. And he was responsible for uh, discharging his duties to the parishioners, that is who stay in the that particular locality and who attend the church and other duties also. Uh, now, after that what you find that you know he was very tired because perhaps there was an epidemic which had broken out. Many people were dying, people die and die it is written, many people were dying and that is why what you find that you know uh, he was really tired and exhausted for which he says my body spake not I. That is that was his physical body that spake and not his soul which is eternally connected with, with the divine. Uh, and then you find uh, he realizes his mistake because this is his God given duty. He should not have uh, said these kind of words and uh, he finds that it was careless on his part to speak such words. So, what he does is he tries to rectify his mistake by thinking that uh, by praying to God and think and saying that God I am sorry for these words. And then uh, suddenly you find he was actually nodding in his chair that he was uh, asleep in his chair and again what you find uh, again he falls asleep sleep. But God has taken care of this uh, fact and that you know he was a very hard working person and he was he really meant uh, never meant to be uh, to, to not to do his duty or anything like that. So, what you find that God has sent one of his angels and the uh, um, angel comes and uh, in the guise of uh, Father Gilligan and takes care of the whole thing. 
uh, I mean, uh, saying the prayers for the dying man. The dying man uh, dies in peace, as uh, merry as a bird, according to the wife of that dying man. And you find everything is in order. And again, uh, Father Gilligan kneels down and uh, in prayer to God and thinks about the greatness of God, compassion of God. And God is benevolent. And I think two things that come up uh, in this poem that we say, God helps those who help themselves. And because, you know, you find Father Gilligan helping himself. And the last thing is that service to uh, mankind is service to God. So because Father Gilligan believes in this kind of uh, thing that, you know, he's doing his service, uh, human service to uh, the mankind, that is why you find uh, it is in a way, uh, in an indirect way, you can say he is do doing his service to God. Thank you all for being in the class.